How long have you been driving? Is the parallel parking easy for you? Well, even if you got your driver's license 20 years ago, you must spend a certain amount of time to get to know how to parallel park. Why is it so hard? Hi everyone, how's it going? I'm Professor Peter. If your car moves like this mobile robot, you don't have to worry about the parallel parking. But our cars cannot move sideways like this. They can only go back and forth with direction change. From the perspective of robotics, a car is a non-holonomic system. If you can show that the system's constraint equation in a Pathian form cannot be integrated into a holonomic form without differential term, sorry, never mind. The terminology is not easy, but let's try to understand this using an example. In the opposite side of non-holonomic systems, we have holonomic systems. This toy, etch sketch is actually a holonomic system. Using two knobs, you can draw something. Using the left knob, you can move the pen horizontally. Using the knob on the right, you can move the pen in a vertical direction. The final destination of the pen can be calculated using the rotation angles of the two knobs. Here's something interesting. The final location of the pen is not dependent on the order of the input angles. Suppose that you rotate the left knob to the right by one revolution and then rotate the right knob to the right by one revolution. The pen moves to the right by 2 inches and then moves upward by 2 inches. If you rotate the right knob first and then the left one, the pen moves up and then to the right. The final location of the pen is the same even though the trajectories are different. Like shown here, the final status of a holonomic system is independent of the order of the input values. What will happen to cars? For better comparison, we will consider three input processes. Move forward by 30 feet. Move forward by 15 feet. Steer the front wheel by 30 degrees to the right. We can make combinations of these three inputs. Let's consider the following. First combination. Move forward by 15 feet. Steer the front wheel by 30 degrees. Move forward by 30 feet. Second combination. Move forward by 30 feet. Steer the front wheel by 30 degrees. Move forward by 15 feet. Third combination. Steer the front wheel by 30 degrees. Move forward by 15 feet. Move forward by 30 feet. So, what do we get? The cars arrived at different locations. The car is a non-holonomic system because the order of the input affects the final location of the car. Here, car has a distinct property compared to the toy at your sketch. That is, the orientation of a car is important in addition to its position. In etch -a sketch we control the horizontal and vertical positions of the pen using the two input knobs. In contrast, for a vehicle, we can achieve the horizontal and vertical positions as well as the car's orientation using two inputs, a control input for forward and backward motions and another control input for steering the front wheels. It seems like a benefit because we can control three things using two inputs. Well, it is not free. In order to achieve desired position and orientation of a car, we need to find the perfect order of inputs. In parallel parking, we aim to move a car to a specific location and rotate it to a certain orientation. Not like this, but like this. So, we need to give a right order of forward and backward movement and left and right steering. To learn this perfect order, we should make some effort. Then you may ask, why people make cars like that? The parallel parking is hard because the car can't slide sideways. This has some benefits. The view angle of a human is less than 200 degrees. If a car suddenly slides to the right or left, the driver should turn their heads very fast to check the safety. It's not easy and is dangerous. In addition, because cars can't get in the next lane laterally, car movement becomes more stable from the perspective of dynamics. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.